Hello everyone, welcome to the live broadcast tonight. We are sorry that we are late, but it's because our state has just gone on a shutdown. We are on a total curfew, there's no movement since yesterday, and so it was a little bit difficult to reset at home. But I'm speaking to you from the luxury of our living room, just to bring you the word of God tonight. Now, um, I've been speaking to you about the end time and telling you that even if the coronavirus, like any other um, disease, uh, passes like a death sentence on all of us, and then it seems to announce like this is ap apocalyptical, it's like the end of the earth has come or the world has come, I want to say to you that's a lie. We as a church already know how the end will come. God speaking through Paul in the Thessalonian letters said to them, this is, we know the way the end will come. The Lord himself will descend with a shout, the trump of God and the voice of the archangel. And, and, and that is then when the end will come. He's told us in several places, Jesus told us there will be wars, rumors of wars, epidemics, famines, pestilence, and all of that. And he said, and yet the end has not come. We know that. We're not going to panic. It's the spirit and the bride that say come. So the spirit of God and the bride of Jesus, we are his bride. We are the ones that are going to call forth the end. And when the end comes, it won't take us by surprise. Of course, we don't know the day or the hour, but we live by faith. And that faith is our connection with him. So we are going to know when he is coming. Even now we are the ones saying he is coming. Because we can feel him, we see him, we know him. The bride knows her groom. The body knows her head. The head knows his body. Now, there's a very important thing. I've, I've listened to quite a lot of people sharing online and all of that. And I want to say, please, just like I'm saying, even those of you watching me, if you don't really have a word from God, just be contented to quote the scripture for whoever cares. The Bible says, say to the righteous, it is well with his soul. Say to the righteous, it is well with him. So if you just say that alone, you have prophesied. And the prophecy you gave is the highest prophecy ever because you are speaking the word of God. There is no other prophecy as high as the word of God. The word of God is the highest prophecy in heaven and on earth. God is not going to say anything new apart from what he has said in his word. Because there is nothing new under the sun. We know that God's mercy triumphs over even his desire to judge. God is not in a hurry to judge you and condemn you just to vindicate somebody else. We are all children of God. Whether we believe in Jesus today or not, we are all sons of God. He created us in his image after his likeness. No human beings are less than any. You need to enlarge your heart tonight and have compassion for the lost. Sometimes we're too in a hurry to breathe judgment, condemnation, and all of those things just because we feel somebody should be dealt with so that we will be rewarded with our vindication. No, God and Jesus, especially Jesus in his heart, does not want one soul to be lost. This is a great opportunity and we need to take it. One of the things that we have failed to do is we have failed to be able to function and build mega churches, build mega centers of the word of God. And the word of God needs to be celebrated in mega centers. The word of God needs to be celebrated in large gatherings. Timothy had a large center in Ephesus. Even the disciples at, the, at Solomon's porch, they were not small. They couldn't be ignored. If we come together, we're stronger and bigger. But everybody wants to speak, and there's no need for everybody to have a voice. We should be contented that Jesus is speaking through all of us. So all of you sons and daughters of the kingdom, hear the word of the Lord today. I want to tell you something about the end time. I've heard several people speak about Revelation 13. Several people are trying to say, this is what the Lord said. This is the mark of the beast and whatever and whatever and whatever. Let me tell you the truth. Those things are interesting. They pacify and they massage the emotions. But I want to, to tell you, do you know or to ask you, do you know the central theme of the end time? The central theme of the end time is not going to be about the Antichrist. The central theme of the end time is not the mark of the beast, 666. God didn't take John to the Isle of Patmos to talk to him about Satan. It's the testimony of Jesus. Let me read for you from Revelation chapter 1. And then you would hear how the Bible opens there. The book says this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's not the revelation of Satan. 
It's not the revelation of the Antichrist. It's not the revelation of demonic activity. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ, the unveiling, the bringing to light of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, Jesus, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent it by signs, or he signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. And John bears record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Even at that time, John was saying the time is at hand. There's too much emphasis on the devil, on fear-mongering, on, on troubling people. That's not the purpose for the book of Revelations. The book of Revelations was not given to talk about Satan. It was picture after picture of Christ's victory. John was on the Isle of Patmos. Every chapter of Revelation may start with trouble, but it ends with the victory of Jesus. He said, I heard a voice behind me say, come up hither. And the voice that I heard sounded like the voice that I heard at the initial. And when I turned to see, I was caught up into glory. In this season, man is caught up to glory. Right now, I want you to receive it. There is an entrance that is open for you into glory. You will hear words that are not lawful for man to utter. You will see visions of God. You will dream dreams of God. You will sing songs from God. You will receive authentic connection with the Father. In this season. Because John received open heavens. He said, I saw a door standing in heaven. That's Jesus, the open door. Incontrovertible. He is the door that is set open that no man can shut. He is the door that when he shuts, no man can open. But right now the door is open. How do I know? Every time there is suffering and trouble, Jesus in the, is in the midst. I've been in trouble many times and Jesus has come and saved me many times and every time he's ready to save me. And that's how I've also known. I'm only drawn to trouble. When I meet people, what draws me to them is when I sense, the moment I feel God is drawing me to anybody, I know right there that there's work to do. There's work. There's work. So Jesus is drawn to sick people, oppressed people, suffering people, difficult times, darkness, storm, pressure, pestilence. That's where you see Jesus. That's why he boasts about those things. He will keep you from the noise and pestilence. He will save you from the destruction that wastes at noonday. He will deliver you. You will pass through the waters. They will not overflood you. You will pass through the fire. It will not consume you. That's why he's telling you he's the Lord of adversity. Is master of the adverse. Be not afraid, little flock. I have overcome, says the Lord. Fear not. This book of Revelations did not end until we get to the 19th chapter. And hear what the 19th chapter says concerning this. Hallelujah. Here he says, and after these things, I had a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Hallelujah. This is where they sang hallelujah. The word hallelujah we have never heard before until here. And what were they singing? They were singing simply that salvation and power and glory has come to our God. Hallelujah is a shout of victory. Power belongs to him. Honor belongs to him. It belongs to the Lord our God. Then he goes on to say in verse 9, And he said unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See, don't do it. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. That's all. 
For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. We have been commanded by the scriptures here to worship God. That means he is the center of the theme of life, of history past, history present, history in the future. He is the object of discourse. He is the center of the universe. He is the only light that is attractive enough to attract anybody, all professors, all intellectuals, everybody who has, who has any modicum of sense knows that Jesus Jesus is the centerpiece of prophecy. He said the testimony of Jesus, the story of Jesus, the doings of Jesus, the workings of Jesus, the spirit of Jesus, everything, his clothes, he, the, the fire in his eyes, the way his feet look, the words that he speaks, the wisdom of God, the glory of God, everything that is associated with Jesus is the central theme of prophecy. You can delete anything that does not have Jesus at the center of its discourse. It is devilish. It is sensual. It will appeal to your senses, but it will lead you down a hell hole from which you cannot return. You will lose your faith in God. Luke said that many, many people's hearts will fail them for fear of the things that are coming upon the earth. They will just hear what is coming on the earth and they will just, their hearts will fail them. Don't join the cacophony of voices that are amplifying this demonic, this hellish, this dark bound or dark sourced uh, gospel. The testimony of Jesus. Anywhere people are talking about Jesus, be there because that's the spirit of prophecy. This is not the hour of Satan, it's not the time of the Antichrist. This is not the time for demonic worship. This is not the time for even angelic worship. John attempted to worship the angel. That's the angel of Christ. And the angel quickly told him, no, I don't take that. And some of us as ministers of the gospel, we need to learn not to take the glory. Let's give it to God. It belongs to him. He is our head. We are his body. I know that it gives you pleasure to, 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 to talk about the difficult times that are going to come upon the face of the earth and only that and all of that. But if only you use that to say bow the knee to Jesus and you are explaining what the scriptures say, then that's okay. But when that is your only message, my friends, you are amplifying the challenges on the earth. You have now taken over from Corona. Corona is not even the central issue now. Now it's fear and people will just begin to die. We are saviors first and foremost. We are saviors, and I repeat it again. You are a Messiah, just like your master, the Messiah. Resemble him on all fronts. Talk about him. Talk about his glory. Talk about his power. Talk about his majesty. Reveal his wisdom. Bring it to light. Cause the nations round about you to hear about him. That's the spirit of prophecy. Every time you get up and you want to prophesy, please, remember, this is small s, is the spirit of prophecy. Don't talk about anything else except about Jesus. Please. It's the spirit of, of Jesus. I mean, that's the spirit of prophecy. Sorry. So the te testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus. That's the spirit of prophecy. You cannot speak about anything else in this time except you are not a servant of God. You must, if you are a servant of God, then you would know that it is the, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. It's the spirit of prophecy. Hallelujah. Is the spirit of prophecy. Anybody that wants to talk in the end time can only talk about Jesus. Oh, how excited I am. He's the one that's going to occupy. He's the central theme of history. He's the central theme of present day discourse. He's the central theme of the future. Not the Antichrist. Not the number of the beast. We don't need to know how they are going to uh, uh, give people the mark of the beast. Please stop that. Because there's no way you can teach that and then bring glory to Jesus. You will make us feel like we are helpless. 
Because what are you going to do then if the governments of the earth can shut down like this and then now determine to then give everybody a, 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 an antivirus and then in it is a chip and then in it is the mark of the beast? Come, what are you talking about? The Bible was Jesus that first sent his angels and said, seal all who are mine, seal them. It's not the, the devil. It, when Noah came out of the ark, Listen to me, guys. Jesus set a rainbow in the sky. And that rainbow was from, from, from his throne. We see that throne surrounded by his rainbow. What was the sign of the rainbow for? It was the brand of Jesus on the earth. He branded it like I own it. You guys can't mess it up. We messed it up and he destroyed the earth with a flood. Now we are, we are faced with fire. A rainbow is not going to save us from the fire. The rainbow is going to only remind him not to destroy the earth by water anymore. So there is a last end time coming. And in that end time, everything Jesus does is what's going to be the central theme of prophecy. His new Jerusalem is the sinosure of all eyes. John said, after I was lifted in the spirit several times, he says, then the spirit took me to a very high mountain. In the spirit, a very high mountain. And he saw from there the new Jerusalem. It was descending from God out of heaven. It was descending from God, even in a high mountain, in the spirit. After several ascensions, your destiny, your life still descended high from that mountain. Are the centerpiece, the sinosure, the object of attention in the end time, you and I, because we are the heavenly Jerusalem. We are the perfection of what Jesus is building. He didn't come to build us houses on the earth. Thank God we will build houses. Some of us will. But the greatest people that ever lived, they dwelt in caves and holes and dens of the earth. And Jesus himself said that the earth was not worthy of them. They were destitute, they were poor, they ran from city to city, they had no food to eat, but the earth was not worthy of them. And we have seen the early church live that life extensively and completely. And we see ourselves as well live that life. So gentlemen, don't give heed to seducing spirits. And don't give heed to seducing spirits and let them use you. Don't let them use you to spread bunkum. Don't let them use you to spread rubbish. Don't let them use you to amplify fear. Don't let the hearts of people fail them. Let them know that the centerpiece of prophecy, the spirit of all prophecy, is the testimony of Jesus. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about how he, he, he met you. Well, people say, uh, I met the Lord, and I, I said, the Lord met me, because I wasn't looking for him. While I was dead in sin, he sent his son. He was looking for me, and he met me. Everything I know from the scripture is what he has given. In this end, end time, my friends, this is your opportunity. He has given the church his greatest hour. It says the whole of creation has been groaning, waiting for only one thing, the manifestation of the sons of God. He says that he had already determined that by this time, principalities and powers will come to church to learn the manifold wisdom of God in all of its infinite varieties. We are that generation that dis dis displays the infinite varieties of the wisdom of God. No generation is greater than us. Abraham is standing now with bated breath, waiting to see what we will do. Daniel is standing with bated breath, waiting to see what we'll do with his prophecy. He said, in the last days, that angel that rises for your people, the angel that stands for your people, Michael, will arise. And he speaks about resurrections. This is the time for resurrection. This is the time where the lost will hear the voice of the Son of Man, and they will get out of the graves and live. There are too many people around you who don't know Jesus. You cannot be comfortable talking about the Antichrist. That's not what the church has to share with the world now. What the church has to share with the world now is the majesty, his imperial majesty, the Lord of all. To talk about his grandeur, his glory, his dominion, his power, and his finished work. That finished work is to tell the worshippers of Buddha that this is the time for Jesus. Shinto worshippers, anybody who doesn't know Jesus, 
Even if you acknowledge him in passing, it's not going to save you. He has to indwell you. Listen to me. Saul of Tarsus was a serial assassin, but he was a specialist in assassinations. His specialty was killing believers. And the Bible says that Saul was on his way to Damascus, having received letters from the temple, from the high priest, to catch everyone who believed in Jesus and bring them to jail. What is the significance of this moment of the coronavirus? Everywhere, radical Islam has risen up against the whole earth. Don't forget, my friends, and in the days to come, I'll be speaking to you about deception. I think we'll do that on Sunday. I need you to know that Satan is known only by one word, deception. And it will be the hallmark of his activity in the end time. We don't even need to waste our time with that. But I'm going to surprise you. Because I believe that we have fought a global war and yet we have not acknowledged it because Satan, Satan shrouded it in hypocrisy and deception. There is no part of the earth that is not in trouble today. Radical Islam is fighting, is fighting the whole world. And we have been brought to a standstill literally before the coronavirus came. There is nothing Satan can do that God will not checkmate through his people. Our prayers, I believe, is what brought a shutdown here. Except for a few attacks here and there in Nigeria by Boko Haram, the jihad has come to an end. There's a standstill. Everybody is fighting for their life. And everybody is careful about where they come and where they go to. This entire coronavirus is affecting everybody across every religion. And it has stifled the machinations of evil men on the earth. It has bridled them. Now we have all become workers of peace. So Isaiah said we will beat our plowshares, I mean our swords into plowshares and, our, and our, 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 our spears into pruning hooks. That is agricultural instruments. He calls it a time of peace where, the, where the, the cow and the wolf are going to dwell together in peace. Where the serpent and the little child, a little child will shepherd a flock and the serpent will be part of it. But that's all. It's a time of peace. That's what the scriptures say. There's nothing the devil can do. People talk about grand conspiracy theories. They say the Pope said he wants to have a one world religion. The Pope can say whatever he wants. It will never work. The greed inherent in his heart and the greed inherent in all the people that he wants to work with will ensure that they do not function. They cannot come together and build anything. There's nothing to be worried about. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. It's not possible for all the heads of states of the earth to come together and decide that all human beings will do this and do that and do that and do that. It will not work. The fallen nature will not allow it. And as long as the church of Jesus is here and there is one little child left to shout praise the Lord, then the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. And we will reign together with him forever. I need you to understand this. Because Satan is very crafty. And he wants to keep you from your life. The scriptures is your life. The gospel is your life. Jesus is your life. In him was light and that light was the life of men. In him was life and that life was the light of men. This is he that lighted every man that cometh to this world. He's the alpha of your life. He's the omega of your life. Whether you believe on him or not. And I speak to you unbelievers today. If you have had your contentions with Jesus. Sa, ma, bow the knee. Humble yourself. Get a copy of the Bible. Study it. Get someone to teach you the word. Look around your neighborhood, especially those ones that preach the gospel, that attacks the church and tells you the church has missed it. Ask them to teach you the way and show you the way. If they ever open the scripture, you will find the things that I am saying and you will know that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony is the story of Jesus. Every time you tell his story, you are prophesying. You are the most accurate prophet there's no word higher than this. You don't wake up and shake your head and say, praise the Lord, I just got a word. 
I got a word from God. I got a word from God in 2020 by the 4th of April. Friends, there is not, look, look at me, the most important prophetic word, the highest prophetic word is the word of God. He doesn't need to tell us what will happen on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, and on Friday. He has told us what will happen every day. If we put our hands in his, he will guide us safely. In vain do men prepare a horse for the time of battle, because safety is of the Lord. He is the Lord. Let his name be glorified. I want you to, uh, tonight, take time and check the scriptures and see if there is any other individual, if there is any other event, if there is any other program that is going to supersede this, you will find that there is none. He didn't say men will not plan and conspire to do, do, do evil. He didn't say that. He told you, no weapon fashioned against you will prosper. Which means in fashioning, they will fashion weapons. But they shall not prosper. The purpose for which he brought them, it will not work. The testimony you carry, however, is what everybody is waiting to hear. He has broken down the middle wall of partition. That partitioning wall that separated us between those who were in darkness and those who were in light. He broke the wall down. The prison walls are down. All you need to do is get up and get out of darkness into light. We took communion yesterday. It's not just for believers. It is for everyone who wants to be numbered in Christ. And this is the time. Friends, everything you gathered is useless now, is wasted now. If Satan has his way, the next thing you will see is lootings and breakings in, I mean breaking ins and, 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 and all kinds of brigandage on the earth. If Satan has his way. Thank God he doesn't have his way. Jesus has his way always. His alpha, his omega, beginning and the end. And after the end, he will still be there. He was before the Alpha. He, was, he would be after the Omega. And everything in between Alpha and Omega, he is. Oh, how I love Jesus. I just love him. I love him with my whole heart. Jesus is the only God I know who could deliver by fire. And not even the dresses of the people will be smelling smoke. And that great king Nebuchadnezzar of, 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 of Iraq said said that and testified jesus is the only king i know who can cure a drug addict from his addictions without having to reduce the doses or whatever he just takes it off jesus is the only god i know who would re remove leprosy like you take off a dress jesus the only god i know who would speak and blind eyes will see Jesus is the only God I know who, who didn't heal any two cases with the same operation. To one blind man, he said, I will see, and the man saw. To another blind man, he, he spat in the ground, mixed mud, and put it in his eyes, and said, go find the pool of Siloam, and wash, and be clean. And the man went and saw. To another, Jesus spat in his face, laid his hands on his face, and then prayed, and said, open, and the man said, I see, but I see men walking like trees. So listen to me. He's the center of prophecy. The hope of the whole world. The desire of the nations. The joy of the whole earth. He's the express image of the Father. He doesn't heal any same disease twice the same way. His operations are diverse. That's his majesty. He's king of kings and lord of lords. He didn't have to argue. He didn't teach his people to use swords to win kingdoms. He gave the people the power of his word on the sword of their tongue. Till tomorrow, in every culture, men communicate only by the things they say. They don't communicate by swords. Swords is a sign of weakness. No real man of God, no real man who has seen God and met God will take another man's life. In the name of religion, you cut off a man's head gruesomely. You mutilate people. You don't know God. If you knew God, he created man in his image. Man is spirit, has a soul, and dwells in a body. This body is not man. That's the reason why when Satan wants to get man, he attacks this body. 
shoots it with guns, cuts it with swords, mutilates it, mutilates it with axes. But the spirit is the real man. Jesus created all of creation. Man is the highest level of God's creation. We have a spirit, we resemble him, because God is spirit. We have a soul just like him. We have a body. The word of God is the bottle in which the fullness of the Godhead dwells. If you permit me to use that word. Jesus is the body in which the Father and the Holy Spirit dwell. And we are like him. Every one of us. Even if your spirit is dead, we are like him. You at least have a spirit. When you stand before him, he's going to judge you because he gave you the spirit, gave you a soul, gave you a body, so that you'll be exactly like him. Only man can say yes to God. And only man can say no to God. And God is helpless. Only man can say no to God and change his mind and then go and do it. He's like God. God changes his mind. Angels don't change their mind. Demons cannot change their mind. The second level of creation, friends, is animals. Animals don't have a spirit. Albeit when you go around the nations of the earth, you see us carry dogs in bags and all of that. We have all kinds of little dogs. Some of them look like cats and rats. But created, animals are created. They have a soul and they have a body. The cockerel that crowed while Peter denied Jesus, it didn't make it to heaven. The owner killed it and they ate it. The, the donkey that spoke to Balaam didn't make it to heaven. When you get to heaven, you're not going to find it there. When animals die, that's all. They are not spirits. They have souls and they live in a body. If you lift up a stick or you pick up a stone, your dog will run away. Every animal knows danger because they are souls. They have minds. They can process that's the real reason why we, we, we became stupid enough to think that we uh, evolved from monkeys. Just because monkeys can mimic what, what man does. No, they have a soul. They are mental beings. But that's where it ends. They are nowhere near the class of man at all. Man did not evolve. The least scale of creation is the plants. You lift up your machete, plants are not going to bow and say, oh, oh he's coming for me. Go with an axe and start cutting a tree. The tree can't run away. It doesn't sense then danger. They are just bodies without a soul. How are you going to repay him back for being created in his image? What are you going to make your life of? Tonight, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. We have resisted him and run on our own. Like he didn't exist. But friends, when you remember what he put on the inside of you, how much he deposited on the inside of you, then you realize that he is the Lord and that he is king and that there is no other besides him. Lift up your hand this evening and just identify with him. Say, Jesus, I am yours. You are my Lord. You are my master. My life is hid in yours and your life is hid in mine. I am your temple, I am your dwelling place, I am your resting place. Take preeminence and lead me, lead me to the ends of the earth. I will walk with you from now until the end of time.